I'm an evolutionary biologist and I teach classes uh, in an evolution uh, introductory class and also a laboratory class where I teach students how to do computer models in evolution and ecology. I have always been interested in evolution and part of what I want to do in my class is instill upon the students a appreciation of the subject and also um, learn how to think evolutionary because I think that's a very useful uh, approach in understanding biology. In, in a way, Lynn's really a storyteller and kind of his classes kind of become this experience where you go in, you learn from him, you learn about the science and then you see how that kind of manifests itself in the world around you. He also has this particular way of making his students feel that they can understand what he's saying. So even if it's a complicated subject, he's kind of got this open factor that's sort of like, you can understand this and it's, it's bigger than just a scientific concept. It's kind of a way to wrap your head around a new way to look at the world. When students come, they often um, think of evolution as studying dinosaurs, things that happened uh, thousands, millions, or billions of years ago. Uh, that is part of evolution, but what I try to instill on the students is that if they understand evolution, um, they are going to be able to use that to not only go backwards in time, but also forward in time, which is to uh, predict evolution or predict the future, which is a shocker to many people that we can actually predict things. I guess one thing that I've learned from Lynn is that the world around you operates in a scientific context and you can't really separate the science from what is societally, what is culturally, and you can think about the truisms of science, the truisms of biology in, in any context, as long as you understand the core workings of how science applies to a certain concept, you can kind of apply it to the world around you. I think I became attracted to evolutions because I found that every time I learned about evolution, it explained biology to me a little bit more. And thinking evolutionarily is something that I think is very, very useful and powerful to biologists. There's an old statement in biology that nothing makes sense except in the light of evolution. And while molecular genetics may, may give us how things are put together, what evolutionary biology does is why are they put together that way? Why is it that uh, organisms have two genders, male and female? Why is it that uh, some organisms are asexual, like bacteria? Those are the questions that evolutionary biology uh, addresses, and I think it's very useful and important for students to appreciate that if they go on uh, in the field of biology. I'd say that Lynn's lecturing style is particularly unique in that it's engaging in a way that some lectures aren't anymore. Lynn's involved with everything he lectures on every step of the way. So every diagram you have down in your notebook, you copied from his hand. He drew that on the board. He's kind of kinesthetically involved as well as mentally involved. And he's lecturing, but he's drawing the picture for you as well. So it's kind of, he's kind of fully engaged in communicating what he's trying to communicate to you. It, it very much kind of lays out what you're thinking about visually and at a pace that works for a lot of students. One of the most rewarding aspects of teaching, of course, is the interaction we get with the students. And even in a large lecture class, uh, professors always will find out faces in the crowd. And these are the faces that are always paying attention to us and responding to what we say. And one day we'll see these faces light up. And we know that that's been the aha moment. Uh, the moment where they either understood something that was always confusing to them or they saw something new that opened their minds. At least that's what I like to think. Uh, but those are the moments that many of us live for as teachers when we feel that we've communicated and reached our students.